So the Eastern Conference escaped drama-free in these uh, bubble games. Uh, the Eastern, like I said, Washington was never really a threat or a player in the end of the day. Just got a free trip to the bubble. But the West? The West was a whole different animal. So Portland and Memphis wrapped up a little earlier, and this game was much, you know, more exciting than I originally thought it would be. And it, it was just a testament that, you know, Portland really don't play any defense. Not to take anything from Memphis, but... If Portland are the team that a lot of people think that they're going to be when they go up against the Lakers, then they, you know, you can't really say they should have won easily because any given day in the NBA, you know, in the NBA's case, you know, football, you got any given Sunday, but in the NBA, it's any given day. Memphis could have very well easily won this game tonight or earlier today and been playing, you know, tomorrow for the closeout game for the right to play the Lakers. But Portland hung on to win the game. Now they get to play the Lakers, and we're going to talk about that a little later. But the West was just loaded with lots of drama, man. It was just, you know, that's why I always tell people, stay East, don't come West, because if you come West, you're just going to get into some bull stuff that you don't want to be involved in. So stay East. Look at the East. Look, ain't no drama over there. You got nine teams over there. But you look over here, the only teams that were left out in the West was two, 15, uh, Golden State, and... um. I can't even think of their name. Minnesota. Look at all that drama. I don't nobody want all that drama. But anyway, before we get to the playoff predictions, because I am going to do first round predictions and then I'm going to do a separate video for second round predictions. So before we get to the first round predictions, I just want to give some honorable mentions to some teams that didn't make it. So like I said with Phoenix, they were the greatest bubble team of all time. They went undefeated. The only team in the bubble to do that, they had a great season to build on for next year. You know, hopefully I'm a Laker fan, but I'm rooting for the Suns, man. It's been 10 years since the Suns were in the playoffs. And that was also 10 years ago was the last time the Lakers won a championship. But room for Phoenix, hoping that they can get in, hoping they can build off this. Monty Williams did a phenomenal job with that team. So let's just hope Phoenix can get back in, can get in next year and just build off what they did in the bubble. The Memphis Grizzlies, they came in with a three-game lead in the eighth spot. They put in a lot of work in the regular season before the pandemic shut the NBA down. That's something that we just keep saying a lot. But they put in a lot of work before the season was shut down temporarily. They exceeded expectations as well because no one had Memphis on their radar in terms of making the playoffs, and they were that close to making the playoffs. They had a bad bubble season. They went like two and six in their uh, games. They won their last game of the season against Milwaukee to get in, but they are a team that's honestly on the rise. And now we got the and now we got the San Antonio Spurs. You know they had their 22 year playoff streak come to an end. Damn, that is a long time. That is a long time. You know, as the Spurs struggled before the pandemic stopped the season, I, I was asking Dan. How did this team get so bad? Because they had Aldridge and they had DeRozan. Of course, you know, these two guys are not superstars, but they are players. They are they were all-stars and they are players who on paper you would expect more from them to be at least a 45-win team in a tough Western Conference. Seven or eight seed, you know, having Pop as their coach. But the playoff streak of 22 years is over. It was an impressive streak. Uh, you know, the last time they didn't make the playoffs was the 96-97 season. This was also the last time a Western Conference team, or in this case, three teams, made it to the playoffs with a losing record. They won 13 division titles, made it to the Western Conference Final 10 times, six trips to the NBA Finals with five championships. So in my previous video, I did predictions on what I thought the first round, second round, third round, fourth round would all be. Uh, I was wrong on all of my Eastern Conference predictions, all of them. None of them came to fruition. Injuries played a part. But we do have the official playoff bracket set. So let's start our Eastern Conference predictions again. Let's write my wrongs. Orlando disappointed me in the bubble. I really thought they would play better than what they showed. I didn't think that they were going to be, you know, a great bubble team because they were so close to home. But I just looked at them as a young, scrappy team who could go out there and get out to win. They got off to a strong start by dominating Brooklyn. 
Uh, they eventually finished like three and five, and now they are the eight seed going up against the Milwaukee Bucks. I went from thinking Orlando could steal two games from Toronto, now believing that they're going to be swept by Yannis and company. Uh, Aaron Gordon did miss like the last four games with a hamstring injury, and I'm not sure about his status going into playoffs. But even if they have him, even if they get him back, I don't see Orlando winning a game against Milwaukee. I think the Bucks are on a mission because of how they exit the playoffs last year, and they know that there's a huge, um, you know, microscope on them to get things done. So I got Milwaukee sweeping this series. Toronto had a really good regular season for a team that lost one of the best players in the game last year to free agency. Um, they didn't they didn't exactly catch me off guard. I thought they would still have a great regular season because when you look at this team defensively, they are stacked. They last year my brother and I would say that they are a you know, a super defensive team. Like, you know, you have your super teams like the Warriors had last year with KD, Steph, and Clay. But this team defensively is just stacked and they can just, you know, do it all. You know, like I said, this is a defensive team that can come at you and come up with a lot of schemes. In Brooklyn, it went like five and three in the bubble where they played the way I expected Orlando to play, like I said earlier as well. I underestimated the talent on uh, Brooklyn's team. And then my brother reminded me you know, he said, why would KD and Kyrie choose a team, you know, that doesn't have pieces already? And he was 100% right, because this team was just phenomenal in the bubble. So I now believe Brooklyn can do what I originally thought the Magic would do. Steal two games from the Raptors. Toronto will win this series, but this is going to foreshadow what's to come next season once Easy Money Sniper and Uncle Drew are at full strength, not to mention, uh, not to mention Spencer Dinwiddie and DeAndre Jordan. Celtics versus Sixers. I honestly don't know what to say about the Sixers at this point, as they just have so many of those, unfortunately, so. It's a tough one. Um, look, I thought Philly would go far and go on a tear when the bubble started. I just thought that they would wake up and get rejuvenated, but this team just can't catch a break. Injury after injury after injury. Now Ben Simmons is out and with Embiid, you just never know. But even if Simmons was healthy, this is just a bad matchup for Philadelphia. Boston is just that team that knows how to beat them. But like Iverson did with the Sixers in 0-1 against the Lakers in the finals, I think MB can do the same against the Celtics in this first round. He will get the 76ers one game. If Philly win this series, I will be completely shocked, but I don't see it at all. Boston is just too loaded, and Al Horford has, has you know, he hasn't been the guy he was expected to be, so I got Celtics 4-1. Sure does feel like we get this matchup every other day, don't we? In college, you have your eight versus nine seed when you're filling out a bracket for uh, March Madness, the NCAA tournament. That's kind of, for the most part, what the NBA four versus five matchup is. And that's what I see with this matchup right here. It's a tough pick. Uh, I said previously that I didn't think Miami were the real deal like a lot of people. I know a lot of people really like the Heat, but I'm still kind of cold on them, if you feel my drift. Uh, I had Philly beating them in the first round, but now, you know, it's Philly who's going to be losing in the first round if my prediction is to stand. TJ Warren came on real strong in these bubble games for the uh, Pacers. He averaged 31 points per game. They played Miami twice in the bubble, and that was and those two games took place last week. And Butler really did a number, you know, on Warren in the in the game he counted the most. Warren scored 12 points in the first half back on August 10th, and Butler held them scoreless in the second half. And if you remember, these guys had some beef dating back before the pandemic stopped uh, play. Um, I just can't buy Indiana series contenders. Not to mention they don't have Sabonis, who's out with a foot injury. I don't like either team going forward after this, but I'm taking Miami to win this one in seven. They are the better team and the expectations are much higher for them. You know, after watching the Blazers' last two games and I watched both those games from start to finish, it really highlighted the lack of defense that that team plays. You know, Memphis scored more points than I thought they would. 
Brooklyn hung in there and I didn't think that they could. And I didn't think they were going to because they had nothing to play for, absolutely nothing. They were locked into their opponent and they really had nothing to prove or nothing to play for, but pride. And they tried that and they came that close. So I respect the Blazers. I think that they had a great bubble season. Dane was clearly the MVP. You know, you can argue Devin Booker because Phoenix went eight and no, but Lillard's performance and his, you know, what he did carried his team to the playoffs. Unfortunately for Booker, they didn't. So had 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 it been Phoenix that made the playoffs instead of Portland, of course, Booker would have been the bubble MVP, but it was clearly Dame. Uh, I'm not taking Portland as serious as I was at first when they were getting hot because I just see how they don't play any defense. And I think the Lakers' sense of urgency is just going to kick up. I think the Lakers understand what's on the line here. They understand what people are saying. A lot of people think that Portland are these major threats, but I just don't see it anymore. I think the Lakers are going to find a way to slow down the pace against Portland and be able to contain Dame. I think what Vogel should do and I really think LeBron still, you know, have it in him to do this. What happened in 2011 when the Heat went up against the uh, Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals, Rose had a great first game and the Bulls won that game by a blowout. Miami went on to win the next four because Eric Spostra put LeBron on Rose and that took Rose out of his game. I think Vogel should throw, throw a scheme like that to, against Damian Lillard and see how that works. I think it will work if he tried. I got Lakers winning this one in six. I still think it'll be a six game series. I'm not saying that Portland are not threats because they don't play defense. You know, obviously if you are a high volume offensive team that can carry you to a 50 plus win season. And if Portland had an 82 game schedule and they played the way that they played in a bubble, of course they can win a bunch of games, but I think against this Laker team with the sense of urgency, they know for a fact that they have to contain Portland, and I think they will. I got Lakers in six. This right here is just a bad matchup for Dallas, but I believe Denver or LA or the Lakers would have been a bad matchup, so the Mavericks were in an impossible situation. Um, the NBA was off for four months, and this is basically the start of a new season because they had an offseason, and I say that to say that Luka, you know, to give him credit, he's gotten so much better. This is technically the season where he should be finishing top two in MVP voting and possibly winning it. Uh, the problem with this series is, you know, he's not going to be able to get out of hand because the Clippers are going to have a bunch of defensive schemes they can throw at him and contain him. And I don't think this will be a fun series for Luka. The Lakers are the team that laid the blueprint early in the year for how to contain Luka and, Luka and knock him off his foundation. You know, clearly if you get physical with him, that's something that he can't appear to handle. Uh, and the Clippers are a much better defensive team than the Lakers. So I don't think this will be a fun series for Luka. I'm still gonna give Dallas one game, but I think the Clippers gonna win this one in five. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this series ends up being a sweep because I don't think Dallas is ready for LA, this LA team, or the other LA team. They're not ready for the Clippers, uh, Clippers in five. This is similar to the four or five matchup in the East, difficult to predict because they appear to be so evenly matched. Utah, another team that did not have a great bubble season. And I did expect them to lose in the first round regardless. Uh, after beating OKC, in the first round of the 2018 playoffs. I thought they would, you know, make the Western Conference Finals the uh, next year, the following year. Uh, they seem to regress and with so many teams such as Clippers, Lakers, Mavericks, I mean, you have so many that just keep getting better. And the Warriors next year, to be honest, if they're healthy, you know, once again, I just see Utah as another playoff team, another team that's just gonna be in the dance, but gonna go home. I got Denver winning this series in six. I think they're a better team. Utah should cause a little trouble, but not much, not enough to push it to seven. This one right here has the potential to be the best and most interesting of all the first round series. There shouldn't be bad blood between Russ and the Thunder, but you know Russ is a fierce competitor. If he gets healthy and he comes back, he's gonna go at anyone, so. But if all the stories are to be believed, then there's definitely some beef and some tension between James Harden and uh, Chris Paul. I feel like this is the type of series where the crowd is needed the most. 
uh, although OKC should be grateful for the 11 years Russ gave them, you know, it would still be interesting to see the reaction he would have gotten during these playoffs against them. But I'm still taking Houston to win this series. Look, James Harden should be way above the first round of the playoffs at this point of his career. He's a big time scorer and a top five player in the league today. So getting out of the first round is a must. Russ or no Russ, Harden should be leading his team out of the first round against OKC. I still think it'll be a tough series because of no Russell Westbrook, uh, at least the first two games, but I'm taking Houston to win this one in seven. Thank you guys for taking time out of your lives to hear me out. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, be sure to give it a thumbs down. Be sure to comment. Be sure to share. Be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate you guys, like or dislike. Um, until the second round, thank you.